Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, he shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, He taketh the wise in his own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul, or Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And ye are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Well, you may know that the chimera is a mythical beast with the body of a lion, the head of a goat, and the tail of a serpent. In our case, we're using a molecular chimera composed of immune receptors, antibodies on the outside to recognize tumor antigens. On the inside, we have signaling domains to deliver that recognition signal. Now, we need a Trojan horse, uh, and we need a Trojan horse to deliver that genetic material to the cell. We're using HIV, a disabled form of HIV that cannot cause disease. Its only role is to deliver RNA that is reverse transcribed into DNA that is permanently integrated into the genome. God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way. Upon the earth. And so here's how that works. We use the lentiviral vector, the HIV. It delivers that RNA reverse transcribed into DNA permanently integrated into the genome. you describe loyalty by thy sword shalt thou live by thy sword shalt thou live from father to son These are the pioneers, Emily on the left and Bill on the right. In these pictures, they're dying. They're dying of cancer. They have relapsed. There's no available treatment to them. How do they survive? What if you had leukemia and I could take your cells, bring them to a clean room laboratory, and modify them genetically to train them to recognize cancer and to kill cancer, and then I give those cells back to you. Well, I'm going to tell you about that story. Well, cancer, as you may know, is derived from our own cells, our own cells that don't stop dividing. Now, the problem in the immune system recognizing cancer is the immune system evolved to tell self from non-self, and if cancer is derived from yourself, that's a problem. And so those immune cells that recognize cancer are very, very rare. Uh, and if they're present, it's not only like looking for a needle in a haystack, it's like finding a dull needle in that haystack. So how do we design and train T cells to hunt cancer? Well, you may know that the chimera is a mythical beast with the body of a lion, the head of a goat, and the tail of a serpent. In our case, we're using a molecular chimera composed of immune receptors, antibodies on the outside to recognize tumor antigens. On the inside, we have signaling domains to deliver that recognition signal. Now, we need a Trojan horse, uh, and we need a Trojan horse to deliver that genetic material to the cell. We're using HIV, a disabled form of HIV that cannot cause disease. Its only role is to deliver RNA that is reverse transcribed into DNA that is permanently integrated into the genome. 
And so here's how that works. We use the lentiviral vector, the HIV. It delivers that RNA, reverse transcribed into DNA, permanently integrated into the genome. And now the T cell retains its native T cell receptor, but it also expresses this chimeric antigen receptor, or this CAR, that can now recognize the tumor antigen and kill the tumor cell. So what does that look like under the microscope? Here we have colored tumor cells green. The CAR T cell is in the bottom left. Uh, and what you're going to see over the course of eight seconds is recognition, activation, the secretion of enzymes that will poke holes in the membrane of the tumor cell, causing it to explode. Here we have the recognition, activation, and now you see that tumor cell explode. This CAR T cell is a living drug. The daughter cells will go to recognize more cancer cells, and the granddaughter cells will go recognize more tumor cells. Now here's Bill in August 2010. Up top you see his bone marrow. Everything that is brown is leukemia. Six months later, his bone marrow is clear and he's leukemia free. In the first three adult patients with chronic lymphoid leukemia that we treated, between 1.3 and 3.5 kilograms of tumor were obliterated by their engineered CAR T cells. Now here's Bill a few years later and he's receiving some infusions and he has a t-shirt that one of the nurses was wearing that they gave out to celebrate the FDA approval of this therapy in August 2017. He's holding a note in his right hand. Note says, I was patient number one of CART-19 and all I got was this t-shirt <laughs> and remission. So he's a happy camper and with his wife traveled uh, the US uh, visiting national uh, parks. Now, Bill had chronic lymphoid leukemia, relatively slow growing. We wanted to ask the question, what if we move to acute lymphoid leukemia where basically it's doubling every day? And these patients who are relapse refractive really don't have time. Uh, they're falling off the edge of the earth. Would those CAR T cells be able to catch up? So here's Emily. She was diagnosed in May 2010, relapsed twice, came to Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, received a drug regimen that would kill an adult, and only one-third of kids make it through. She did make it through, but her bone marrow was still full of 60% leukemic blast. She had lesions in her kidney, liver, and spleen, and she was not far from her demise. Well, she recovered, thanks to her own CAR T cells. And she was patient number one, uh, but she was certainly uh, not the last. Uh, we licensed this technology to Novartis, who conducted multi-center clinical trials worldwide, uh, imagine the global biologistics of a gene-modified cell therapy, where the cells are collected in Australia collect and, and sent to New Jersey for manufacture and then shipped back. So that resulted in the FDA approval of this drug, Kimraya. This is a bag of cells but it's a drug. We now have six approved CAR T cell therapies from various manufacturers to treat relapse refractory pediatric acute lymphoid leukemia, adult lymphoma, and multiple myeloma. And there will be more as time goes on. This is an accelerating uh, field. But we have wonderful clinical responses uh, but not from everyone. We have approvals in blood cancers. We still have a lot of work to do in solid cancers, and we need to work on enhancing potency. So how can we teach every T cell all that it can be? Well, we are in the era of synthetic biology where, where we can design those receptors to function in a logic-gated fashion and or not, switches, conditional activation, safety switches, and potency enhancers. Now let's talk about access to new therapies because we have approvals in North America, in Europe, in Israel, in Australia, Japan. How do we get to more countries and how do we get to more patients? We need to work on potency, as I said, especially for solid tumors. This therapy is complex to manufacture. 
The lot size is one. It's unique to each individual. There's gene modification. We have a viral vector. Can we shorten that manufacturing, implement automation, or could we potentially generate these CAR T cells in the blood, perhaps with nanoparticles to deliver the genetic material? There's a talent shor shortage worldwide, and uh, we need education and training at all levels. And we need to recognize that these therapies in their first iteration are financially complex. Can we implement biomarkers to enhance our decision making and implement value-based payment systems? Now, worried about ethics, because with many new technologies, there are bad actors that piggyback on these terms. And this uh, is an article that appeared in Science Magazine some years ago talking about these strip mall stem cell clinics or stem cell clinics that market stem cells direct to consumer for everything for Alzheimer's to autism. Uh, and what really struck me in reading the story is the quote from the supposed patient, I don't know the science behind my miracle cure and I don't care. What message does that send about the scientific and clinical validation of the development of new therapies? Well, here's Emily 10 years later, leukemia-free, an honor student, a senior in high school, driving, applying to colleges. Uh, and her parents have started a philanthropic foundation. It's a remarkable story how she was treated and sh she recovered. Uh, and it's so remarkable, it's the uh, subject of a full-length documentary film of Medicine and Miracles that premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival festival this past June. And it's playing at festivals around the U.S. and I hope that distribution rights are in place so that you're able to view it internationally. Now the Emily Whitehead Foundation has had gala events, uh, Believe Ball, this is in October, and they invited dozens of kids who have received this CAR T cell therapy. Imagine being on this stage and sharing the story of your treatment with someone that you never met who went through this unique treatment yourselves. These children would not be here were it not for that therapy. Well, it does truly take a village to develop these transformative uh, therapies. This is a celebratory flash mob in the lobby of the Abramson Cancer Center at the University of Pennsylvania August 30th, 2017, um, recognizing uh, that hundreds of people participated in the, in the development of this therapy. These are my disclosures. And with that, I thank you for your attention. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, when in the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat? Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. And account that the long-suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen.